punch, honey. I really appreciate your love and effort. This voicemail message sounds heartfelt, but nothing about it is real. I'll talk to you in the morning. Good night. I love you and love you so much. Good night, girl. The man who spoke of love said he was 49 and lived in South Africa. Penny Ward met him online on the dating app Tinder. He just seemed so, so nice and we just started chatting and he was based in Liverpool. He'd been there for 12 years, but at the moment he was in South Africa on a great farm that he just bought. But he was due back at the end of March. So he just said, shall we chat on WhatsApp? If you want to like meet up when I come home. The couple started speaking on the phone. They exchanged hundreds of messages a day, but they never talked over video. Within two months, they spoke of love, and he asked for money. He sent me an email to say that all his machinery was in customs and he needed £26,000 to get it out. But just I, by that point, I didn't want to lose him. So I think I was just willing to say anything to him to keep him. Penny sent about £500, but soon she realised she was being scammed. As she tried to discover who this man really was, she met a woman we're calling Elizabeth. It turned out at the same time he was using the same photos, same story, but different name to scam her too. We met on Tinder and he was just so lovely. And then before you know it, you're sort of addicted to being cared for in a way that I hadn't been before. The man told Elizabeth he loved her and they planned she'd move to South Africa. But then came the appeal for money for his farm. I don't know. I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. It's 110,000 rand now. Without that, then they're not going to release my registration. I, I don't know what to do. Elizabeth sent £30,000. It was all her savings. Once he realised he didn't have any more money, his messages stopped and you just feel like such an idiot. The story, the photos, all just lies. And afterwards, everything seems too obvious. I haven't even gone to the police, I'm so ashamed. And what's the point? I'm never going to get my money back and he's never going to get caught. I'm too ashamed to tell anyone I know. I'm borderline now whether I lose my house or not. Tinder, where the women met this scammer, told us we are saddened to hear of anyone who has fallen victim to a romance scam when seeking a real connection. We have a zero-tolerance policy on this type of behaviour and are constantly monitoring our platform to detect and remove any suspicious profiles. We encourage our members to look for the blue tick, which indicates that the member's profile image is genuine and has been verified by Tinder through our photo verification programme. But exclusive figures shown to us by Action Fraud show thousands of people are being duped every year. Reports of online romance fraud have gone up over the past 12 months. And you'd expect that because of the pandemic, people are at home, isolated and more vulnerable. And victims in total lost a staggering £63 million. And remember, those are just the cases we know about. So how can you date safely? I think the let's get off here and go and chat somewhere private is a real red flag. It, it, it seems perfectly natural in a conversation, so you have to recognise that. But, you know, that's, the dating services have messaging platforms which are monitored, which are checked. I think the other is things just becoming not real. People who are instantly in love with you can't keep away from you. Penny and Elizabeth both admit they were lonely and vulnerable, but they hope by sharing their stories, others looking for love might avoid fraud. Catherine Ivertotsi, Sky News.